Hello and welcome. My name is Henry Washburn. I'm the tech evangelist here at Datto. Uh, what I'm going to show you today is the feature called hybrid virtualization um, and tell you also the benefits to that feature as well. Now, uh, on my showing off Datto device, I'll go to the protect page just to show you that I have a device that is actually that is not accessible on the network, a backup locally has failed, uh, and I no route to host indicating that there is no local connectivity to this uh, Ubuntu machine. It's really easy to start the process. You click Restore, click on Ubuntu, and instead of local virtualization, which will localize, uh, locally virtualize on the data device, we're going to virtualize on our off-site servers uh, with a quote-unquote hybrid virtualization, which this is the only feature that Altos have, but on Cirrus 3s, you can actually do local virtualization, hybrid virtualization, a couple of different uh, exports as well. So I'm going to set this to 2 gigs of memory because it's a very low uh, RAM utilization machine, and bridge to the local LAN, build the VM. What's happening now is the data device is communicating to our off-site off server saying this is the snapshot that we want to virtualize off-site. Please clone the data and get ready for virtualization. It'll then give us the option to start the hybrid virtualization once we do so. Now the benefits of a hybrid virtualization are numerous. Uh, first of all, it's your only means of disaster recovery on an Alto device, so pretty much you're limited to that. But on a Cirrus 3, you have a lot of usability. Let's say you have a lot of, you have unlimited agents that you can back up to a Cirrus 3, uh, and you might have overloaded the data device with local virtualizations. You can go ahead and virtualize other servers in your infrastructure using hybrid virtualization. So you're load balancing how the VMs react, uh, Keep in mind that this does virtualize in the cloud, so what this also uses is your throughput of your offsite bandwidth. You can uh, either or restrict your RDP connections to your local IP address and uh, also potentially require RDP authentication. I'm going to go ahead and click mount and start VM. I'm going to copy the RDP link that the data device provides me and put it in my remote desktop connection system. This is the VM running in the cloud right now with uh, that I have access via remote uh, remote desktop. Now it takes a little bit to react because it is virtualizing in the cloud right now uh, but what I'm going to do just to verify connectivity is go to the terminal And since this server is set to DHCP, it should have grabbed an IP address that I can then change. And I can verify that it is actually connected to the local network. Uh, it's 192.168.100.220. And the IP address of my data was 159, so I know that it's at least on the same local LAN. But what I have to do is make sure that it's connected. Also spell if config, right? and set it to the correct IP address. Enter the password since I'm not root and verify that I have the correct IP address. Okay, so I've got 192.168.100.32. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my data device and verify that I can protect it again. In any disaster recovery, we wanna make sure that we can back up any virtualization uh, that we're running. In this case, we're backing up through the internet to our, uh, from our hybrid virtualization to the data device. Keep that in mind, it's actually using your download bandwidth. So if there's a lot of things going on, maybe you want to limit the amount of backups that are happening on this hybrid virtualization. That being said, we do have many different procedures of, of doing temporary backups and things like that for, uh, uh, for hybrid virtualizations, which are you know, dependent on the end user bandwidth that there is. This actually shows you that we have successfully hybrid virtualized and now backing up that hybrid virtualization. For more information on how to run anywhere, restore anytime, and protect anything, go to data.com.